Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've noticed in a lot of the newsletter replies and YouTube comments that there are still a couple of folks out there who are confused with the overwhelming amount of YouTube videos on active recall, learning techniques, and how to study for exams. So if it's still confusing you, I'm going to break things down really, really simply today with a study with me video where I'll jump back into how I revised for medical finals. I'll screen share what's on my laptop. I'll show you all of my study tools and I'll keep things really, really simple and concise. I'm hoping that by the end of the video, you're amazed at just how simple I revise and how quick and easy it can be for you. This is the exact technique that I used to come first my medical and surgical finals exams and what I then adopted when I was a postgraduate trauma and orthopedic surgeon revising for my masters of surgery exams and membership to the Royal College in the United Kingdom. So let's jump into it, starting off with what exactly is on my desk, how I set things up, how I get going, before jumping into how exactly I revise in detail. All right, so here I am at my desk. You might have seen this from study with me videos. We'll put a clip of that up so you can see what it looks like from the side. I've got my nice little duck cup filled with some green tea. I'm actually wearing my gym gear because my study routine is very much get up, go to the gym, that revives me, wakes me up, gets me feeling fresh for the day, and ready to attack my revision. At the moment, it's 7 a.m. here. I've been out very, very early. Again, apologies, I'm a bit of a freak in that I get up super, super early to get the most out of my day. Uh, but I'm now back. I've poured my green tea out, I'm sat down at my desk. I've got my brand new MacBook Pro M1 Max chip computer that's just arrived, which I'll be reviewing shortly, which I'm gonna be screen sharing from. And on my desk, I've also got a couple of other things. So I've got my diary, which allows me to take notes. Uh, I'm gonna do a run through this uh, at some point in the future. Uh, this basically allows me to plan out my day. I'll go into detail about how I journal and how I map out some of my daily uh, learning and revision. And then I've also got my iPad Pro, uh, which is on my desk, which at the moment has got Kindle loaded up. As I'm gonna be revising for finals examinations, I've got the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, uh, which for me was the go-to longer reference text for looking up anything uh, on which a lot of the exam questions were based on. Uh, now, just as a bit of an aside, before I've jumped into getting studying, one of the things I've done is I've mapped out the syllabus, I know exactly what's gonna be tested on the exam as outlined in the contents page of the Oxford Handbook. I've also uh, prepped some materials as you'll see. So I've selected an online question bank, which we'll go through in a second when I screen share. Um, and I've got some mindfulness mu music on in the background. So as soon as I'm ready to go, I'll jump into it. So let's take a look exactly at how I jump into questions, how I then use the reference materials, and I'll talk through how I use active recall in that. So let's hop into it. All right, so you can see that one of the ways that I revise is just by jumping straight into questions. This is something I've talked about in lots of my other videos, like those on Active Recall. Now, the reason I do this is because it's the most time efficient way to learn, in my opinion. Rather than simply reading through the Oxford Handbook page to page, which I'll show you how to do in a second when you're looking up things, what I tend to do is really jump straight into these question banks. So what you can see on screen here, this is uh, an online question bank system called Chican. Um, you can see that I'm logged in, it's got my name at the top, it's got some of my stats and the number of questions that I've picked up already. Just a couple of quick things here. So first of all, there's lots of cool gamification on this, which I quite like and it helps me. So um, there are things like active challenges to do a seven day streak and then to unlock um, a uh, little what's called study buddy or an, an asset. Uh, so very, very gamified. There's then some daily motivation and quotes um, in this particular one from Seneca, which is begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. Um, now for me, if we just go back up to the top, you can see that I've set uh, a daily goal for medical finals where I'm saying by the 1st of December, um, I want to complete a set number of questions. And we can actually set this up in the goals area um, by basically going in, creating a new goal, setting the number of questions that we like, so if you want to do maths, you can set a certain number of questions per day. Um, but the most important thing here is, regardless of what you're setting and what you're doing, that you jump straight into revising. So if we go to the Chicane store, I'm gonna be revising for medical finals. Now they've actually got a featured product here, uh, but I'm just gonna show you how you can find a question bank or a series of questions to quickly revise from. So I know that uh, I want to revise for medicine. I don't wanna pay for anything, so I want something that's free. Um, and I want something uh, that is optimized for medical finals. So we can see here that the first product up is 600 more medical finals questions. So uh, I will access this by clicking the free button. 
And now instead of clicking on play, which will take me directly into the questions, I'm just going to go into the customized revision area. I'm going to go single player because it's just me practicing the questions. I'm going to select the question type that I want, which is single best answers. Medicine. I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to select my product. And then I'm going to customize my revision session here. So I know um, I've got probably around about 30 or so minutes at the moment um, in which I am going to revise some of these medical finals questions and talk you through it. Now we're going to speed that up for the benefit of this video, um, but it will just give you a really nice idea about how I use the system myself. And I want to do, let's say in 30 minutes, I'm going to push myself and try and get through 30 questions. So around about a minute a question, which for medical finals, I know having spoken to people and obviously been through finals myself, that that's really about the time that you've got to answer a question. Now, some of the other settings here I'm not going to touch on in detail. Um, I'm going to keep mindfulness on so you'll see some mindfulness stuff uh, pop up. And uh, I'm also going to activate spaced repetition. So what it's going to do here is show me all of the questions that are available in this particular question set of 30 questions. Uh, but it's going to predictively push me ones which I have either not done for a set period of time or I've got wrong. And this is all done by an algorithm behind the scenes. Um, if I wanted to run through this and do this as an exam without any explanations, um, I can actually hide all that and I can hide the analytics to get through the questions as quickly as possible. Um, but what I'm going to do here, because I'm studying and I'm learning and I'm referencing my notes and really consolidating and applying context to any questions and things that I'm learning, I'm going to put on show the answers, the analytics and the explanations for each question. And I'll talk to you why that's important in a second. Um, but now let's get going. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to answer these 30 questions and I'm going to talk through and we'll speed up and slow down as I do talk through some of the sections of this to show you how I learn, how I build context, how I overlearn, how I use some of the techniques we talk about in our videos called interleaving, spacing, active recall and show you how this really works for me as quickly as possible. Okay, you can see that this, for this first question, um, it's a clinical question for medical finals. Um, I can see that I've got a countdown timer to get through all of these. So, uh, Dumbing syndrome is not a postoperative complication in which one of the following? So, this best of five or single best answer type question uh, follows the exact way that medical finals is tested. Uh, specifically, this is a gastro and surgical uh, question. So, uh, as I'm looking down here, I've just jumped into this. So. Um, I'm not really sure about this, so um, let's have a quick go. So let's just go for partial gastrectomy. So I've actually got that one wrong. Now I don't mind about that. Um, it's giving me an example of how many other people got that question correct or incorrect. Um, but what it is giving me is an explanation. So it's saying dumping center is not associated uh, with the top answer, which involves the division of the muscle of the pylorus to open the gastric outlet. Now, lots of technical information on this question as a quick example. Um, so what I might do here is I, I'm going to do two things. So I've, I've tested myself here. I don't know the answer to the question. I'm not worrying about it. I'm having a growth mindset, but I want to read around it and I want to understand why that I've got this question incorrect and, and why uh, the correct answer is true. So what I might just do in really quick terms here is um, I can just jump over to Google and what I'm going to do is just type in dumping syndrome. I'm going to hit enter. And this is, this is then going to give me lots and lots of search results. Now, just as a kind of top level, what I will tend to do is I will kind of default to something like a Wikipedia, just as a kind of top level overview if I don't have a clue about a topic or a term. Um, what I'll then do is I will read through this and I will think about the particular question that I got right or got wrong. Now, for me, that was why dumping syndrome was a complication of something. So what I'm gonna look at here is really just look at the kind of like top level overview of what dumping syndrome is. And I'm gonna try and pull out any of the key facts 
um, or signs and symptoms around this and how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So I'm just kind of running through this in a little bit of detail here. Um, now, the second thing that I'm going to do is then go back to the question and just read back through that uh, to think about if the reference material, in this case Wikipedia, has helped me out or not. I'm then going to jump into the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, uh, which is on my iPad or Kindle. I might jump into this on my phone um, or on my laptop as well. Um, but what I'm going to do here, basically, is I'm just going to use the search function and I'm going to type in uh, dumping syndrome, literally some malabsorption information uh, which flags up dumping syndrome. So I'm now jumping into this, looking at the Oxford Handbook. Um, I might highlight this in my Kindle app um, and save it for later. Uh, and I know that this is something that I'm now reading around, I'm now understanding. Um, if I see this question again or something similar to it, I will have some level of context, some level of understanding. And that really in just basic terms is what we mean by building up context. Now, if you've got lecture notes, you might also screen share those. Um, I also have a finals uh, short notes book and what I will tend to do on my Mac is if I don't know something, I will have this up and with the new Mac OS system, um, what I'll do is I will hover over um, the full screen button and then I will tile my window to the left or right. I then have things like my Wikipedia or Google search reference window um, and I also have my short notes book and then I'll have my Oxford handbook, longer reference book on my Kindle on my desk. So um, if I then just jump into my short notes book, I'm going to click on that uh, on Mac OS and that basically pins it up alongside this particular question. So what I can then do is I can uh, kind of skim through this, I can look at sort of the different chapters, I can go to things like uh, the medicine chapter, I can look at where sort of gastroenterology is um, or surgery is and I can scroll down to these and if I'm using uh, a physical book here I might write in the margins of it, write a little note um, about what that particular thing that I got wrong was, I might flag it up, I might just tear over the, the corner um, of the book so that I can come back to the later date uh, and if I'm using one of the reference books here I might just make a quick note in the Kindle document itself um, or I might just highlight something but to be perfectly honest for the most part I'm just reading, I'm just thinking about things that I've got correct or incorrect when I've applied active recall and this is what basically builds context uh, around what I'm learning and this is super super effective for me uh, in the way that I learn. So um, if we now just jump back into our questions I'm going to jump through a load of these um, and then I'll stop at certain points and just talk through some little bits that I'm doing. So this particular question that I'm doing now, which is about the Glasgow Coma Scale, is a really, really good example of around building context and also thinking about how you can use some learning techniques like encoding, uh, which involves mnemonics, which I'm going to talk about in a future video. But if we look at this, this is very much something that needs us to apply our knowledge. So we need to have an understanding of what the Glasgow Coma Scale is. We need to understand really the sort of fact-based levels and memorization levels of what the scoring system is for that and then we need to apply that level of knowledge to the question itself and actually calculate it. So um, with this particular question there's a couple of things I can do. One thing I might bookmark it um, and add like a little note to it um, if I want to add any further context to it. Um, but actually what I'm doing here is I'm thinking okay this is a patient where they're opening their eyes in response to a stimulus, uh, they're localizing to pain but they're speaking incomprehensible words and the patient's unable to follow a simple one-stage command. So, you know, let's just say I've never ever come across the Glasgow Coma Scale before, I don't know what it is, I can't remember what it is, and I'm completely confused by all of these. Now that doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a best guess here. I'm gonna jump in and say eight, so it's actually nine, so I'm one off. And then the explanation is giving me some context around this. So uh, what it's basically saying is, give me some top level information about it, which is the score can be between three to 15, um, and in this case the score is 5 for the motor response, the score is 2 for verbal response and the score is 2 for eye opening. So this has given me some information but I need to understand what the Glasgow Coma Scale is and what the score is and how to remember that. So again, 
I'm gonna go back to Google. I'm gonna pop in Glasgow Coma Scale. So again, I'm gonna optimize for uh, Wikipedia because that's very, very quick. And this gives me a nice table um, showing me the scoring system. So we've got I, we've got verbal, we've got motor response and we've got a scoring system here. So now with this table uh, in my arsenal, I'm gonna go back to the question itself and I'm gonna figure out, okay, from the information given, let me actually apply this information and let me go back to the table itself and look through this and then see exactly why I've got this wrong and actually calculate it in real time. So I'm jumping into the questions, I'm challenging myself, but then I'm actually going back and working through it again, to build up that context. That's really what we mean by building up context. And, and as you start to do this, you'll begin to learn the Glasgow Kama scale a little bit more. The other thing that I'll do here, especially with something like my reference book in the Oxford Handbook, is I will actually go and I'll look up the Glasgow Kama scale, and I will find exactly where this is in the book. And then what I'm gonna do is, I know that there's certain information that I need to learn for that. I'm gonna basically hide that. And then in my brain, I'm thinking, okay, what is the scoring system for the verbal component of the Glasgow Coma Scale? So I don't look at this, I move this away from me, and I think, okay, can I say this out loud? Can I think about it in my mind? Can I write it down on paper? And if I can, that's great. I'm reasonably happy that I've got that correct. If I can't, I'll go back, I'll look at it, and then I might look for any little helpful tips and tricks or encoding tools like mnemonics. So if there's a mnemonic or a rhyme or a quick way to remember something like the Glasgow Kama scale, um, or I might visualize it in Wikipedia or with a diagram or with a table, and I'll just practice kind of visualizing that in my mind, or I might try and draw the table out on my Evernote using my Apple Pencil. And that again, all these things are active recall. It's not just about testing questions, but it's about highlighting what you know and what you don't know. It's then about going to the reference materials to look for the best areas and resources and visual diagrams to help explain things. And then what you're doing is you're using some what's called encoding techniques, which help you to remember some of that information before you then go back and test it. So all of these bits of learning are linked together. And this is where some of the confusion can come from when you're looking at and watching lots and lots of YouTube videos where some people are saying active recall is the only thing that works. Some people are saying encoding is the perfect thing to do. In actuality, all of these things are mapped together and it's about having a process that works for you. Okay, so as you can see on this question that's just popped up, um, again, there's a question around dumping syndrome. Now, because we had previously been back and read around that topic, um, we've got a little bit of better idea around what this can cause and what it means. Um, so which of the following is not a symptom of dumping syndrome? So again, this is going back over things. It's interleaving topics between different areas of medicine, even in the same exam syllabus. 
and it allows us to learn a little bit better because we're jumping directly into questions and building context around how this particular medical condition, which is dumping syndrome, fits in around multiple disease pathologies. And as I'm looking things up, reading around it, overlearning, I'm driving more context, which is then helping me to store that and memorize it in my brain in a more structured way so that when questions like this come up again in the future, I will know it better. And again, in terms of encoding, the explanation for this next question on dumping syndrome is a really good example of this. So I'll go into detail about what encoding is and where it fits into how you actually form memories in a later video in detail. Uh, but effectively, encoding is really, really simple. You don't need to worry about it too much. It's about how you package together the information which you then recall using techniques like active recall. So in this example, um, we've got a question bank, which in the explanation, it's actually split up the causes and the symptoms and the presentation of dumping syndrome into early and late. So it's actually segmenting and packaging that information into little boxes. So some of the symptoms and signs are early, some are late, and that helps us to contextualize that and put it together in our brain in a logical structure. Other things around this, as I've mentioned, are things like mnemonics, things like using memory palaces and the method of Loki, things like using visual diagrams, as you saw me look up where the left and right bronchi were, just as an example, in a previous question. And so we tend not to talk about sort of encoding and things like that too much um, when we are learning, because a lot of it is very obvious and a lot of it is actually put together for us by things like lecture notes. And equally, the process of me going back to things like uh, the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine um, or diving into my short notes book. Again, that's building up this visual data where I can now remember in my brain, hey, I got that question correct, I got it incorrect, I went and looked up something. And this is where it was. And so in my mind, I'm actually visualizing and thinking about the page in the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. I'm visualizing the page in my short notes, I'm visualizing the page in my lecture notes or a diagram and that's then helping me to remember things and pull that information back out. So this question's got a really good example of where in the explanation, in addition to actually describing the different classifications of stroke, there's also a link to a YouTube video, which I can then jump into, and it will take me through this quite old school looking video from 2008, which has got a complete breakdown and lecture around stroke. So if I wanted to, I could look and watch through all of this, and I could, again, build context around what this question is asking me um, and jumped in, into it in more detail. Um, but I'm not going to because I actually know this quite well. So I'm going to optimize and, and get back to my questions. So this question explanation here is again, a really another good example of some little memory hacks that I can use to help me to pull information out of my brain when I'm testing myself, when I'm remembering information. So something like Cushing's disease, if I jump into Google, I then jump to the images section, you'll see that for something like medicine, you can actually use quite a lot of visual diagrams really, really effectively. So I've spoken about this before in other videos, but if we jump into 
something like this, or perhaps this one because it's a little bit uh, more visual, we can actually jump directly into a complete overview of what the patient looks like. So in this diagram, for example, um, we've got all the symptoms of Cushing syndrome mapped around a visual representation of a human body. Now in my mind, I'm then thinking about what this looks like. And um, for something like Cushing syndrome, where you have a lot of what's called centripetal or fat deposits around the central portion of the abdomen, you then have muscle wasting. Another really good example in lectures in medicine is visualizing that this and almost making it entertaining. So um, the classic uh, colloquialism around Cushing syndrome is a patient might appear like a lemon on some sticks because their sticks like their legs because they've got muscle wasting and they've got a round rotund abdomen because of the fat deposition uh, and obesity. Um, so, so that's an, a concept of, uh, again, thinking about how we can use these memory cues to help us to pull information out of our brains and help with the storage uh, of this type of knowledge. Now, I'm gonna go into a deeper video on the science behind all this and how encoding, active recall, memory storage really work. But in practical terms, again, keeping things super, super simple, all I'm doing here is I'm testing myself with active recall, I'm jumping in, I'm not reading things, I'm not being inefficient with my time, I'm not just reading chapter, chapter, chapter. I'm literally jumping in, testing myself, I'm looking up things that I know I don't know, either because I've got them wrong or when the explanation flags up, I'm thinking, I don't know this well enough, I need to read around, I need to overlearn. Um, and then I'll jump into different resources, as you can see, uh, with either the Oxford Handbook um, or my notes book, uh, which I've been through previously, or my lecture notes or a YouTube video, or I'll look for images and things like that. And all of these different resources provide different context and provide me with memory cues and ways to recall that information when I need to. So now if there's a question on Cushing syndrome coming up in the future, perhaps someone who is watching this video doing medicine, you'll remember something like lemon on sticks so that they have wasted muscles in their peripheries and central obesity. And if that question comes up, it's quite quick because that's a very visual, humorous way to remember things. Um, so just jumping back in to our questions, um, we are now pretty much at the end of time. So we can see that time is up. Um, I got about 24 of the questions done within 30 minutes there, which is pretty good. Obviously we sped it up for this video, um, but I'm then being able to get a breakdown of exactly what I've done. Um, so I can see that across all the specialties where I was testing myself, um, I have got a couple done um, in each different area of medicine here. Um, but you know, I've got done two questions on rheumatology and I have got both of them incorrect. So I probably need to prioritize some of those questions. So next time I come in to do my revision using a question bank, I can filter the questions by rheumatology um, and I can then jump into the rheumatology section of my short notes book of the Oxford Handbook and read around that to really get good context. But again, the most important thing here, I'm not worried about my percentage. I'm not worried about um, how correct or incorrect I, I got things. Um, what I'm doing here is I can go back in and review my questions. Uh, I can look around things at the end of a study period. I can go back in and do those questions again, but I'm really trying to get through as many questions as possible when revising for an exam. So just to kind of summarize this and to bring everything together, um, what I've hopefully shown you how to do here is how you can jump in really, really quickly into past papers, into test questions, how you can use active recall immediately by self-assessing and testing your own knowledge really, really quickly. I will sometimes do this on my mobile phone as well if I'm in work uh, between operations or I'm very, very busy and I'll have something like the Oxford Handbook or I'll Google things on my phone. But if I'm at home, I'll set my desk up, I'll get my green tea, I'll put my lo-fi music on and I'll jump into questions. As I then work through those, I'll incorporate lots of little study hacks as you've seen hopefully in this video. And what I'll do is I will build context by looking things up. I'll use memory cues and memory hacks to help me encode that information. Um, things like visual pictures as you've seen. And I will use multiple different resources, whether that's my lecture notes, whether my exam, it's my exam syllabus or whatever, 
and I will jump back into that. And that in itself will help me to build context and help me to, in my mind, visualize where I need to go to actually retrieve that information. And as I do more and more of this, and as I test myself more, that memory becomes stronger. The process of pulling out uh, with active recall strengthens that memory, as we know from books like Make It Stick and all the research around that. And that's then building up all this context, all this information. And that's how I did really, really well at my medical and finals exams. So hopefully you found that really helpful, really, really interesting. The key takeaway points there are, as you saw, I take minimal notes. I'm really just diving in, I'm doing questions. I'm thinking about things. I might jot down a couple of points in the margin of a book with my Apple Pencil just to, again, help build context. Uh, but overall, I'm just focusing down, I'm getting things done, I'm not procrastinating, I'm testing myself, I'm using some memory hacks and cues, and then I'm assessing myself at the end to see what I know, what I don't know, and I'm getting through the questions. So hopefully if you're revising for an exam at the moment or you're studying, that just gives you a little bit of help. It should feel really, really simple. You should, you should be thinking, hey, is that all that you do? And the answer is yes. It's a really, really efficient, really, really effective way. Obviously you can play with things as you like, but that's the way that I do things. And I'll be dropping some more videos around memory formation, around some of the science behind some of the pieces that I do, as well as some other resources that you might like to add into your arsenal, like flashcards and other ways of learning so that you can build up an experiment and play with all these. So like me, you can find what works best for you within your time frame, within your time periods, uh, and really be as efficient and focused with your exams to get the best outcomes possible. Thank you so much for watching. Do hit subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll catch you again in the next video.